Hi everyone, it's Nicole and I have another layout using the Double Scoop Studio Calco Kit. This is the 26th layout using this kit. It took me an hour and 18 minutes to complete. And um, I'm going to use that pattern paper as the background. I don't know if I showed the label there. I was looking at my notes and I have a bunch of scraps that are left. And again, I'm scrapping pictures from 2006. I just kind of grabbed that box because my challenge for February on my Facebook was to ch um, scrap pictures that were older, um, that had been sitting in your photo boxes for years. So I just grabbed a box and started going through it. And oh my goodness, the memories that just flowed. Uh, my son is only like six years old in these pictures. He's just so darn cute. And uh, if you could see the close-ups, um, he's got the biggest dimples in his cheeks. And he's had that since he was born. Actually, the, the day he was born, um, when, you know, when, when he was born, the nurse, all she did was she yelled, dimples because they were so pronounced so I knew he had dimples before I even knew he was a boy <laughs> and um, <clears throat> it took them like five minutes to tell me he was a boy too because um, the first thing I asked I really really wanted a boy I already had two girls but my main con my main thing was I wanted a healthy baby so the first thing I asked when he was born was Okay, so I had to stop the recording because my son heard me talking and he could tell I was talking about him. So he wanted to come in and listen. And I did another five minutes and it didn't even record. So uh, what I was saying was um, the thing I was most concerned with was whether or not I had, you know, a healthy baby. And uh, anyway, so they kind of forgot to tell me whether or not, you know, he uh, he was a boy. <laughs> And about five minutes after, it felt like five minutes, I was like, so, a uh, boy or a girl? And, um, and all this from that picture where he's leaning over and I can see the dimples, it just brought back that men memory for me. And uh, so that's what's nice about going back and doing older pictures because it just doesn't bring back obviously memory of that specific event like that was his first day of school and like I said I don't know if that was grade two or grade one I'll have to go back and figure out because he's he uh, because of when he was born uh, he actually started school when he was four and um, so I just have to go back and <laughs> figure out the years and see if this was grade one or two I know it's 2006 but and now I'm going to uh, go through some project life cards and I'm going to pick out three of them yes three of them and I'm going to use them on this layout and I really enjoy um, using project life cards on my layout and Janet uh, left a message on my one of my YouTubes and she said you know um, how are you doing with your um, your goals and how how is that coming along well, as far as scrapbook pages I'm on target like I'm doing the 20 plus layouts a month and I've uploaded that many videos a month uh, my project life not so good <laughs> I I wish I had a spot where I could just leave it there and then just go and and scrap a little bit at a time and um, which I don't uh, this weekend I, I hope to to get January this this weekend I plan I have the weekend off oh, well until Sunday anyway and uh, I plan on trying to get January done but I'm going to tweak it a little bit I'm not going to do four double page spread I might do week one and week two on a two-page spread and three and four on another two-page spread. And then that way I can get caught up. Um, I don't know. I and I guess I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I just don't find that our lives are that exciting, I guess, <laughs> to kind of document every day. But anyway, we'll see. I, I guess I'm just not in the habit of 
you know, if we go here, just kind of take a quick picture because it's, it is part of your daily life. I guess I just have to change, um, how I'm thinking, uh, uh, about it. And these are the project life cards that I'm going to decide to use. There's three different ones and the one that's to the left of my son there. I'm going to end up changing that one because I want a different one and that's where I'm going to do my journaling. And I know like he's my baby. He's, he's my last child, but it was probably the easiest. He was probably the easiest to send to school. And I don't know if it's because, well, I've been through this twice before or because his bigger sister was there with him. Um, it just made it really, I don't know, easy to send him to school. I mean, we still did the whole thing. We put him on the bus and drove to school and took pictures of him getting off the school bus and, you know, all that stuff and um, that we did with the other kids. But my heart wasn't as heavy as, as, it, was with, as it was with the other kids. And... Um, and he's a very independent kid, so that probably helped too, because I um, knew he'd be he'd be okay that way. I thought I was going to get calls from the principal all the time, but I knew that he <clears throat> was going to be okay. And I guess this part, I'm just kind of thinking of what else to do. Um, that pattern paper, that's the little scallops, all different colors was really throwing me off. I do not like that pattern paper and I was trying to use it on this layout. And um, <clears throat> it's the backside of this orange pattern paper. But I thought this orange pattern paper looked really great on this layout because my son has an orange shirt. Now I'm taking my marker, my Stedler marker from Staples. And I'm going to outline all the pattern papers and it's just so that they all kind of coordinate. And all these papers were scraps. So like I said, this is a 25th layout. There was 20 pattern papers in the original kit. And then I bought the add-on and the more pattern papers. So I had 40 pattern, 40 sheets of pattern papers. And again, I'm going to count how many, um, that I actually use for a background because what I'm trying to do now is any of the second pattern paper that I can use as a background I'm going to do it uh, just to kind of try to evolve my scrapbooking I guess uh, for years and years and years and years I've been scrapbooking for 15 years and if I go back into my albums I'd say 95% of my layouts are on cardstock so I'm just trying to change it up a bit and um, that's how you discover uh, not new things, but discover new styles, I guess, for yourself. Um, if you try something that you don't necessarily do, um, it might just change up your style just, you know, a bit and um, find something else that you maybe like. <laughs> It's just like if you are a two-pager scrapbooker, like two-page spreads, and have never done one-page spreads, and and that's exactly what I used to be. I never did a layout unless it was a two-page spread. And then I started pushing myself to do a one-page spread, and now I love those. I love the one-page spread. Because what I found that the, about the only thing I was scrapbooking was anything that I had a lot of pictures and the little things that maybe I only had one picture, but the story behind it was what more, what I wanted to scrapbook wasn't in my scrapbooks. It was only the things where, you know, we were camping and there was lots of pictures or on a vacation and lots of pictures or anything like that. But now... I'll, I'll do, I do more one pager and even one photo, but it's more about the story behind the photo or the more about the story that I thought of when I looked at the picture. It's not necessarily of that specific 
event, but just a story about that child. And then I journal about how, you know, whatever I was thinking about. So at this point, I started gluing down all the um, Project Life cards. And down underneath the photos, I kind of took the Project Life cards weren't big enough. So I kind of split one in two, put it at both ends. And then I took another one that coordinated. I kind of put it in the middle. And that's where my title is going to sit. And then the rest that I cut apart, I put them a little piece in each of the clusters. And now I'm going through some of the stickers. And these are just from my stash. And then I'm taking my EK Success Powder Tool. I'm taking away the stickiness. And um, then I can move the stickers around on my page. And those my mind, uh, my mind's eye tiny stickers. They're probably one of my one of my favorite embellishments. I just love to add little words here and there. Um, it almost adds more to the story than you're actually putting into your journaling. Uh, so one of the stickers said such a special day and then I took another one that says today is and then I just kind of cut them apart and then they're going to fit to the right of the layout. And I had put some ribbon underneath uh, the photo. So I was just trying to figure out where else I could put ribbon on the layout. And at this point I had walked away and then I kind of had laid out my title on some wax paper. And the little blue letters are from October afternoon. And it just says first day of. And then I'm going to use the thickers that came in this month's kit. And just a uh, word to the wise, uh, those stickers are not sticky at all. Again, when I took them, took all the pictures uh, for, you know, to, to do these voiceovers, all the pages that had these letters that I had not put glue, they were all falling off. So there was a few other layouts that I had used those letters. So it's best if you um, put quick dry adhesive or some wet glue in behind those letters. This one here, I just did it right away so that it's done. And now I'm just going to fix up that title so it's a little bit more centered. And some of those uh, tiny word stickers uh, that I chose, <clears throat> one of them says bright. Today is such a special day. And then cute and little. And then one of the stickers that I had was a favorite time of the day <clears throat> and um, we just every time school not so much now but when they were younger and that staples ad that uh, you know it's the most wonderful time of the year and the dad's going down the aisle and he's getting the you know school supplies and the kids you know they had the big stink eye and they're just like so upset and uh, so we used to tease our kids and we used to sing that too to kind of get them upset, you know. <laughs> and um, so again, I'm taking those leftover stickers. I'm just cutting on the outside of it. And then I'm going to use it as a base <clears throat> or as a frame, part of a frame to um, add to each of my little clusters. There was even a couple of those stickers that were leftovers of a heart. And I just kind of cut the outline. And then so now I'm just going to have an outline of hearts and I'm going to put it in I think there was only two so I put them in two different little cluster and then the third cluster I just used the same tone of that color of sticker and just um, it was just sort of a, again an outline of a label so now I'm going to put some foam tape and that big huge roll I got it at custom crops and it's from Scotch 3M. Another sticker I found just said fun. And now that star border that I got uh, in one of the sticker books, I just cut it in three and I'm going to put it in the three different clusters. I punched out some circles from the leftover uh, Project Life card and I put it in each of the cluster. So basically what I like to do is once I find um, the base of the layout and is, if you can tell too, the polka dot navy and teal, when I first was working on the page, it was on the top and the bottom of the layout. 
And when I put the page together and I put it on each side, and I just found like it contained the page a whole lot more like horizontally instead of making it go verti vertically. And that's, I like that a whole lot better. And, and it left more white space at the top and the bottom of the layout. And I also like that better. And so now once I have my base done, then what I do is I go through all my embellishments, my stickers, everything. I throw everything in the middle of the page. I don't know where anything's going to fit. I just know that I'm looking for, if I'm looking for a brown element, I make sure that there's three. If I pick out um, a sticker in a certain color, I make sure that there's three. If I take out stars, I take out three. You know, everything I take out in threes. And then once I find, I usually pick between, and that's pretty broad, from five to 11 <laughs> um, embellishments. And then once I feel like I have enough, then I start dividing it into the clusters. And <clears throat> I used to be able to, or I used to be able to, you know, to look at a sticker sheet and then take one and go, that one will go in that cluster and this one will go here. But it used to slow down my process so much because I had to think of the, the next cluster too much. And I found this way, I just get a whole bunch of embellishments and then figure out the placements later. Like there's sometimes that I used to spend hours, sometimes even days on a layout because I would walk away and come back and move everything around and move it around and move it around. And, and the thing that changed it for me is when I started doing video recording, it took those time consuming pages to, okay, well, you know, you really don't want to wait four or five times that the battery dies and you come back and you know that a layout takes you six hours so and you don't want to just stand there and be doing nothing while the recording's going so it just kind of forced me to make decisions and and then I came up with this little uh, thing that I do where I just throw everything in the middle of the page and then I figure out everything and usually uh, once I know the base of my layout I stick it down and then I put everything together now I'm at the spot where I balled up some twine and now I'm adding some enamel dots I'm adding it in three different colors a brown an orange and a teal and I like using my enamel dots in different colors for a few reasons one it adds more color if it's more different colors and two it seems to stretch my stash like I'm able to use let's say the orange on more than just that one layout or that teal I'm able to use it on more than just one layout because instead of using because usually there's nine to twelve in one row of those enamel dots so if you use nine on one page you've just depleted that that color so this way it kind of stretches my stash of enamel dots now I'm looking for my box so that I can do my misting and I took a couple glimmer glaze from Tattered Angel in a brown and an orange and then I am using the navy Mr. Huey sp um, spray but I'm just splattering it I'm not actually using the spray bottle now I'm going to show you some close-ups but then I decide that I'm not done I want to do something else because I had that ribbon that separated the photos from uh, the title but I wanted that ribbon somewhere else so all I did was I took two little pieces of ribbon I folded it in half and then I'm just gonna stick it in be in behind the two other clusters like the one to the right and the one to the top left of the layout and then it makes it so that that blue is in, in in three areas on the page. And then I'm going to feel like now it's done. Now I'm going to show you some close-up pictures. 
and then some still pictures of each of the different clusters. If you want to see more uh, pictures, you can go to Studio Calico, Two Peas in a Bucket in the Members Gallery, Nicole Jones 911. You can join me on Facebook. The link is in the description. And also on Pinterest. And that link is also on my YouTube channel. So that's it. The page is done. So thanks for watching. Bye.